Let's turn to our panel for some more reaction and of course to look ahead to the press conference that is coming at half past. And Jim, that's often when we've seen some bigger moves. So it is. Look, I mean, ultimately, I think what the Fed is going to is going to try to key off of is what's happening in the labor market. I think inflation they're comfortable with. Inflation has been coming down. It's starting to settle down. They're making progress to their 2% target. I, I think that's yesterday's news. Tomorrow's news is what happens to payrolls. Now, look, ultimately, we've had some storms. We've got a lot of noise within the data. This is stuff that they have to sift through. But I think their biggest concern is if there is a slowdown in the economy and if the unemployment rate starts to rise very, very quickly, then they will have wished that they've continued on with their pace to cut interest rates. And I think that's what they're going to do. 25 today, 25 in December. And I think they're on a mission to 4 percent and then they're going to reevaluate. They, the statement admitted the reference to having gained greater confidence in inflation moving sustainably to the 2% target. David, what does that mean? I don't think it means that much. I, they're, they're always trying to be uh, use as few words as possible, so if they can get rid of a sentence, they're, they're happy to do so. I think they needed to ha use that language while justifying a first move, but I, I don't really think it means very much. Um, I do, you know, I feel pretty good about payrolls, though. I think that, you know, after the election, you know, just not seeing commercials will make people feel, feel better. But I think you will see a bounce in small business confidence. There's a lot of uncertainty going into the election. I think people will probably be more positive about making business decisions. So I don't see any reason to expect a slowdown. And we might actually see slightly higher inflation in the months, uh, months ahead. So I, I don't expect the Fed to accelerate the pace of rate cuts. Stephanie, your thoughts? Yeah, so our base case is that they're they're going to be doing that every other every other meeting cutting cycle from here. The one thing we didn't talk yet about is the ECI, the Employment Cost Index, showed wage inflation just continuing to slow down. So this is largely explained by perhaps productivity picking up, which is a great backdrop for the Fed to be able to continue easing, even though the economy is holding up fairly well. We're sitting here in a kind of a non-inflationary type of uh, of growth environment with productivity actually picking up. So despite the, the expectation that growth is, is, is going to you know, remain fairly solid here, the Fed is still able to, to continue its path on easing. Steve, we turn to you for some more uh, color from the statement. As we, were there any dissenters? No, not this time. Um, we, there was some speculation, at least I, I guess it was from me. I was thinking that maybe Michelle Bowman, who was unhappy with 50, would be unhappy going a further 25, which would be 75. Uh, she'd wanted to do 25, but I guess she's on board now. Sometimes, uh, Kelly, when a person dissents, they dissent the one time, they let their objections be known, and then they go along with the committee in the future. I've seen that quite a bit, uh, the, the idea that, hey, you, you raise your hand, you let it be known. I like the characterization that was uh, said earlier, and I think it's worth thinking about. The Fed says in its statement that the risks are roughly balanced. But what's it doing? It's cutting rates. So it is indeed acting, regardless of what it's saying about the risk being balanced, it's acting as if it's bigger concern is indeed what's happening in the employment market. And it's going to be interesting to see, well, first of all, about revisions, but maybe how the Fed chair or other Fed officials characterized that recent October report we got, which was indeed, um, you know, messed up by the hurricanes and by the strikes. But still, when you look through it, and I talked to a lot of economists about this, generally they saw it as weaker. Because if you add back 100,000 from those two factors, you still have a pretty weak employment board. So I think the Fed is saying risks are balanced, and that's part of this whole recalibration idea. And maybe one of the questions we might ask Fed Chair Powell, hey, are you recalibrating or are you done recalibrating? Because the recalibration is kind of like we need to get down to another place, and then we can start thinking about acting more along the lines of the data. David Kelly, does a new administration mean anything to the Fed or to the Fed chairman? Uh, obviously, Mr. Trump is known for being outspoken, for saying exactly what's on his mind. Um, so, so talk to me about that a little bit. Yeah, and not, not yet, I think. I think that uh, J the Fed will continue to cut gradually. The first, uh, you know, in December, I think they'll cut again. And then we'll go into early next year. And we'll see what policies are actually likely to make through Congress. And when the, whether there's any early action on tariffs, that could have a big implication. Because if you have a big increase in tariffs right off the bat, that's going to increase inflation. That might make the Fed more nervous. But I think the Fed is going to try and keep its head low for a while uh, and see if it can avoid getting any incoming from the new administration. Eventually, though, if something goes wrong with the economy, I expect that the administration will get very mad with the Fed and blame the Fed for, for that. But that's, that's kind of the, comes of the job if you're on the Federal Reserve. Jim, uh, do you think, I, I believe uh, the Fed chair's term uh, continues into 2026. Do you see any possibility that he might not fill out that term, either because he decides to step away or because he's basically pushed? 
Well, there's always a possibility, right? Um, I, I don't see it, though. I, I don't place this as a very, very high uh, component of potentially what uh, you know President Trump's policies would be, would be to remove the Fed chair. I don't think that's his first stake in the ground that, you know, that he's going to make. I mean, like I said, it, it's clearly a possibility. But so far, the Fed is doing pretty much what he wants the Fed to do. He wants them to cut interest rates. The Fed is in the process of doing that. That should hopefully stabilize and help the economy. Ultimately, you know, the Fed has a dual mandate of price stability and full employment. I think the number one thing, whether it's President Trump or it's, or it's Chair Powell, is they need to make sure that the jobs market stays stable. Because if it doesn't, there's this thing called reflexivity. And what that means is that you can get a rise in the unemployment rate that comes very quickly, and that could have very negative effects on the economy. So I think what the Fed is really focused on right now is making sure that the labor market stays as stable and as healthy as possible, and doing rate cuts is doing their part to ensure that that happens.